I say this all the time. The Prophet والسلام's first wife, Khadija, Sitna Khadija, radiallahu anha, was a an entrepreneur. She was older than him. She was the first to believe in him. She is the embodiment of a divine feminine in every sense of the word. Also his daughter, Fatima. It's the same. The, if you look at the women in the history of Islam, the first universities in the world were opened by a Muslim woman. So you don't have to be a feminist to want women to live up to their best potential. You know what I mean? You don't. Ha- I don't understand this this thing of you don't have to be a feminist to to not want bad things to happen to women. Is th- is that crazy to say? Like it blows my mind that people don't get that. You don't have to be a feminist to want women not to be harmed and to want women to live up to their f- full potential and live their best lives. So my dad said this when we were leaving lunch, and he said a woman wants to be wanted and a man wants to be needed. Or actually. A woman needs to be needed and a man needs to be wanted. Because think about it, as a woman, what what will destroy your self-confidence in a relationship? If your man doesn't want you, doesn't want to romance you, doesn't want you physically, doesn't want anything to do with you, you, you will literally sit there and just be like, what the hell just happened? Why? You know? And for a man, it's if you don't need him. If you make a man feel like you don't need him, oh, I don't need you, I can do everything on my own that you don't need anything from him, you don't need him to provide for you, to protect you, to open up the jar of pickles, he, it, it emasculates him. He will feel like he's this chair. And it's just not right. So I think even if you play the game, want her and need him. It'll You do yourself a big service. Forgiving your parents, it's, it has nothing to do with them. It has everything to do with you. It is a baggage that you carry. It is a cycle that you lock yourself in if you don't forgive them. You end up turning into them or worse. It is a burden and a trauma that you carry inside of you and you remain emotionally attached to all of that negativity and it only severs your growth and your progress. To forgive them has nothing to do with them and it has everything to do with you. And then, but and what, what other options do you have? What other options do you have? Are you just going to sit there and and just remember, oh, my mom was horrible. Oh, my dad was a narcissist. And then what? Where do we go from here? I think people need to yearn for that more. People need to focus on that more. And you know what? Even if you didn't have a parent that had dreams for you and didn't even care about you, have dreams for yourself. Find a partner who has dreams for you. Find a community that has dreams for you. God is great and he, he makes up tenfold for anything he's taken away from you because he doesn't take away from you. He protects you from And this is where people also get it twisted. There's a fine line between self-sacrifice and compromise for love and then for insecurity. And I think this is where people get it really twisted and have the strings all confuzzled in their brains. There is no divine relationship without compromise and sacrifice. It's inevitable because to get closer to God is to sacrifice everything your ego is attached to, right? So... It, rightfully so, you would do that for your husband and your husband would do that for you. Where people get it really twisted is, I did this for her, I did that for him. And it's self-sacrifice and compromise coming out of insecurity and, and lack of self-worth and value. And it's nine times out of 10 childhood trauma and then also the fear of ending up alone, which is a, I can't say a valid fear because I don't believe in valid fears, but I understand where it comes from. That being said, there's also a cure and a healing to it, which is what people should focus on more. But that that differentiation needs and that separation needs to be made very clear in people's heads that there's compromise and self-sacrifice for love and for the family unit and all of those beautiful things. But then there's also the self-sacrifice and compromise that's coming out of insecurity, which just leads to the death of your soul. Because I always want to have an answer that comes through an Islamic lens. I asked, I called him and I was like, Dad, is there any hadith or an ayah in the Quran that talks about forgiving your parents? And he said, no, that doesn't exist in Islam. There is no such thing as forgiving your parents. That is an impossibility because there is nothing to forgive them for. No matter how atrocious they can be, no matter what they've done for you, tit for tat, if you tally it out, you could never repay them because they gave you the gift of existence. Then there's nothing in this world that you could give them back that would repay that gift no matter what they've done for you. So to forgive your parents, it doesn't exist in Islam, which I find really powerful and really interesting. If it leaves a sour taste in your mouth, it's a red flag. If you see that it's something you've seen other men do for their women, and you know that he could easily do it for you, he's just choosing not to, that's a red flag, okay? If if you've asked him once, 
twice, three times, and it hasn't happened yet, that's a red flag. Now take those three and apply it to every little scenario in your head. And you will see as clear as day that red is not a mute color. Red is a very strong, powerful color, and you're just choosing to paint it pink and butterflies and rainbows and Barbie land. Because if you take those three and apply them, you'll very clearly see red flags are red flags. There's no two ways about it. خيركم خيركم that means the best of you are the ones that are best to their family and their parents. Now, it's not خيركم خيركم لأهله اللي didn't abuse you and were kind to you and gave you everything you wanted and didn't cause any tr- trauma. It's not conditional. There's no addendum in there. You know what I mean? And God doesn't make mistakes. So it's خيركم خيركم لأهله. And Gabor Mate, Mate, I think that's how you pronounce it, said, don't worry. He was talking to a new parent in his audience. Don't worry about screwing up your kids. You're going to screw them up. It's an inevitable. It's part of existing. It's part of bringing bringing in life it's part of breathing it's part of living it's part of dying it's just why are you trying to change what life is rather than try to bring an impossibility into the equation take what you have and make the best of it because there are ways to make what you currently have amazing it's just people want to focus on on something that is so beyond out of their control and they they just they ruin it for themselves but it's خيركم خيركم لأهله and there's no negotiating with that it is a finite statement